Hi, this is Professor Nugent, and for the first three rounds, I've given you uh, a detailed analysis of the industry and how everyone's done. At this point, I feel that you can do that pretty well for yourself, so I'm just going to take an example of a company in round five that didn't do so well in round four and give you some advice on what you could do if you're a similar company that hasn't done as well. So this, I'm calling this company round five example. And the first thing every team should do is go into their overview points. So this company did relatively okay in sales, but I'm saying this is average because the average growth of the industry is about 30%. Uh, and we look at the, the debt ratios are pretty good, so they must have paid down some debt. The profit margin went from 51 to 53. That's a very small gain, only a 5% gain. It's better than nothing. However, their operating profit margins went down uh, by 3%, probably because it did some more advertising, and their net profit stayed the same. Well, actually, I guess percentage-wise, it went down 3% because of the rounding. So when your profits are flat or going down, you see an overall reduction in your total asset turnover, your equity multiplier, return on uh, equity, your earnings per share. Actually, earnings per share did good, but return on assets were low. Um, forecasting was moder moderately better in most cases. Uh, however, there was a deficit. So this 200 points could have been 400 points. If you add back the negative 100 and add 100 points, this could have been 400 points. So if you are having deficits, this is really robbing your team of a lot of points. So make sure you have extra cash surplus just to defend against a deficit. So here I know what I need to do after reviewing this two things I need to do. I have to greatly increase my profit margins and I have to more effectively, more efficiently use my assets because my total asset turnover and return on assets are low. So the best way to do that is to increase my sales and profits while not um, ineffectively or inefficiently increasing my assets. So if I go into my assessment, this is where I'm going to read over, see three stars in revenue, read over the suggestions here, and this is, you know, the suggestions will give me an idea of what I can do better. So a lot of areas have done well. Total asset turnover is poor. Revenues are poor. So by clicking on this, uh, this little eye here, uh, examples will come up. Uh, I'm going to review uh, my charts. So if I go into my uh, team performance chart, I can see you know, the change over time for the company. But more importantly, I'm interested in this, uh, my sales chart. So I can see that I'm under forecasting my luxury brand and my sedan while I'm efficiently forecasting my economy and truck. Okay, so it's very important to keep those in mind. Then I would go into the industry and I'd see how competitors were faring or what, how they're building their cars how much money they're spending in advertising. And I could, I could also see that in the charts, in the marketing charts would give me a good idea of the advertising per team. So I could see how I'm, where I'm fitting in in the fold of all the companies in their advertising spending per team and also uh, spending per car. All right. So then in the financials page, I'm gonna remember my overview, I left off at 53%. So on the sales page, when I redesign the vehicles, I'm going to I'm going to keep an eye on trying to maintain. Okay, so now I was able to greatly improve. improve um, greatly improve my profit margin for economy. And one of the things that's helping me here is that um, so one of the things that's helping is these cost reductions. So uh, operational cost reductions. So these operational cost reductions have been able to greatly reduce uh, 
Um, so I think, I think this is one of the areas I under forecasted. Greatly uh, increase my profit margin by reducing my costs. So truck is a little bit, um, so what was my truck? Okay, truck was good. This was under forecasted. And, and then luxury, you could do more in luxury. Okay, so I just want to keep in mind a more accurate forecasting scenario. But my, my truck is really not performing as good as as good as I want it, so I'm gonna re not really be that aggressive on forecasting. Um, but the key point here is, if I'm gonna build a car, I want to have a car that is going to do better on the profit margin. Okay, so 58, 60, 63, and 67 are all higher profit margins. And can I do a little better here? I'm going to try to get this to um, 60%. Okay. Now another thing that's important for operational cost reduction, for operational profit margins, is how much am I going to be advertising? So I have this expectation range. So I, I would want to go, I'm going to go to the um, finance page and I see uh, my sales. So advertising cost of sales here, I spent 20 million round, 20 million versus six. So let's see, 20 million to 600 million. Um, so 20 divided by 600. So that's about three three percent. So if my sales are increasing, I could sell. I could do about twenty seven million this round to keep it in the same proportion. But um, so just to try to keep an idea that I'm not overspending on my marketing, and look at my peers to see how they're marketing in relationship now. Since my profit margins are going up, I have a little bit more freedom to market a little bit more heavily because I'm, I'm going to be generating uh, about 8% 8, 8 uh, more profit, not 8% eight, not 8%, 8 um, profit margin points higher. I'm going to go from my overview is about 53 and looking at my sales page, I see that I'm going to have an average, I think, of about 63 or so. So I'm going up almost 10 percentage points. That's going to help my operational profits go up. So I do have a little bit extra leeway to market uh, maybe up to 30, 40 million this round uh, and still have an improving operational profit margin. Okay, so one way to make assets efficient is not to buy more production plants than I need. So here I'm going to need two production plants, one production plant. I'm good here and I need one here. Okay, so I am going to have to buy a number of production plants here, but only what's needed to get me to my forecasts. So I'm going to get, and then you see I'm forecasting sort of round numbers, so my capacity utilization is 100%. Um, so 100% capacity utilization. And, and basically what that means is my factories have a 5,000 car capacity and I'm making 5,000 cars. So that's making a very effective, efficient use of assets. So my total asset turnover should be much better. As long as I sell all the cars I'm forecasting here, my total asset turnover will be, should, have, should improve greatly. Okay. Now, in my operational investments, I see that in my overview chart, here, uh, if I double my operational investments by or increase them by 100%, I can earn up to 100 points. 
So in this round, I, um, I'm going to max out, I guess, my operational investments if I can afford it. And this will help to give me more points in this round uh, and also will help to make my car even more cost effective, efficient for the last round, round six of the simulation. Okay, now I'm in the finance page. So the first thing I want to do is go to the bottom. I have a $61 million surplus. So I'm going to go and retire some funds to help to help uh, retiring debt will help lower my interest rate, which improves my net profit margin. It also helps improve my debt ratios. I'm going to buy back some stock, which will help to increase my earnings per share and also help all my per share variables to improve because I'm reducing the amount of outstanding shares. And I still have a big enough um, cash surplus that if I have any unsold cars, I will still have, I will still, um, have a surplus and not lose a, a, a net of 200 points. Okay, so those are my basic uh, concepts of how to improve your simulation in this year. If you're one of these teams who haven't been living up to that 400 point per round, you really have to focus on profit margins and keep an eye on where your profit margins are, um, where your profit margins are, how you're building your car to support those profit margins, how you're investing in the future to uh, support even better profit margins in the future by investing in your company and how you're managing your finances. So you see that it's uh, critical that you have all these areas together and you understand how they work together and how a company is going to move forward and be profitable. Okay, so again, in the team competition, I'm seeing a lot of teams that are just not greatly improving their profit margins. Every review, I say you have to get these profit margins up, you have to make operational investments, you have to redesign your vehicles, and still only a few teams are acting upon that. A lot of teams still, by the, you know, by the fourth round, you should still, you should be in the high 50 percentiles of uh, gross profit margins. By the fifth and sixth round, you should be in the 60 or 70 percentile of profit margins. And that's how you do well in the simulations. And a lot of teams just aren't following my advice. So um, maybe they're not hearing it. Maybe they're not watching these videos, which is um, not a great thing. Okay. Uh, and also in, the, in some of the lectures for the course, I talk about how to improve your um, concepts to improve the simulation scores or um, basic business concepts that help to improve companies. These are things that you should think about as well. Okay, so I've completed the team decisions for round five, and you need to complete these by um, Tuesday. So good luck with that. And next week is our last week, so make sure you catch up on all the work that's due and prepare to finish the course strong. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.